Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, it's time to discuss varsity entry age. We'll make provisions for exceptional students, and that's according to the minister. The minister of education, Professor Tahir Maman, stated that the federal government will make provisions for exceptionally talented students who are under 18 to gain a university admission while maintaining the age limit for general entry based on the national policy on education. The 18-year age requirement applies to only tertiary institution admissions, not to O-level exams like WIAC or NECO, according to the minister. The government is also focused on ensuring that students acquire at least two skills at the basic education level, aligning the curriculum with digital and technological advancements to better prepare students for future challenges. Joining us to discuss this is Dr. Peter Ogudoro, is an education researcher. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure to join you this morning. All right, so we're looking at provisions for exceptional students, but the current age limit is 18 years. Now, first, what do you think about the current age limit in Nigeria? Because there is a, there is a system, I think it's 6334, that we're, we're working with, and that's the system that, you know, based on our national policy. So uh, the age limit, obviously, for 18 years, you cannot go to university till you're 18. Do you think that age limit is set right? Well, okay. th this reflects um, what you find in most countries in the world, uh, whether it's... Yes. Yeah, this reflects what you find in most countries in the world, whether it's UK, um, US, or even in the Scandinavian region, and mm -hmm. in also in, in a good number of countries in Africa. And so what you find is that uh, for us in Nigeria, uh, we have a three-four system of education, mm -hmm. which requires a child to uh, get to start primary school at the age of six and spend uh, six years in primary school. That means that the child should be finishing primary school at the age of 12. Mm. And of course, the gets into junior secondary school at that age, spending three years um, at that level, which takes the child to the age of 15. At the mm. time, the child finishes junior secondary school and then spends three more years to finish a, a, a senior secondary school, finishing at the age of 18. So that's the calculation. Um, of the minister and who is um, what the policy envisages, you know, for every child who aspires to go to university. Uh, so, but unfortunately for us, when we promoted the idea that uh, private sector should help us to, uh, you know, reduce the burden of funding education on, mm. on the government, um, so they also came with their own, uh, you know, downside, which is uh, parents should bring their children into to primary school and so you find a lot of young people children who are starting primary school at the age of four some even three and finishing about the age of 15 16 uh, to implement the national policy on education the way they envisaged it mm. but the challenge we have here is that the 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 problem uh it's, it's not a problem you can solve you know overnight if you want to move back to ensuring that the policy is respected you can't just wake up one day and and decree that we differ from maybe 2025 nobody gets into the university on the, until the person is age 15 because you have a backlog of young people mm -hmm. who have already passed through the system and uh, it will take us a minimum of about six years before we can transit to a system that um, will ensure that children start at, at the age of 18 without having to waste years, mm. uh, at least two years after they have finished, you know, um, a secondary school. So it's, it's a very problematic situation we have in our hands. It's going to be difficult for the government to manage it. You can't implement that even in the next three years and not run into the crisis of having a lot of young people who finish secondary school and are, are going to be idle, not in education, not in employment, and not in training. And whatever idea the government thinks, uh, government people think they have are going to be ideas that will be very, very difficult to implement because we are looking at a large uh, number of young people who are going to be affected. Every year, Nigeria is now producing a minimum of about 2 million people who graduate from, from, from secondary school. And the average at which they are, uh, age at which they are finishing, especially those in private schools, is about the age of 16. So how are you going to, uh, overnight, 
uh, move into this kind of uh, arrangement that the government is thinking about. So I, I'm still uh, uh, think wondering what magic they're going to perform to be able to uh, separate uh, probably the people they are now regarding as the exceptional you know, talents uh, uh, from those who they consider to be ordinary. It's, it's a very problematic one. And corruption is going to come into the matter because every parent will want to consider his or her child as as as, as a talented young person. So they might use money to, to have their way, you know, so that their children can start school early. So it's um, where we are is a difficult place. So government probably needs to exercise patience and then let parents know that it would differ from about five years' time. They will not allow children who are not 18 to get into secondary school. That would be easier to manage. Mm. Well, get into university, yeah, because to manage. yeah, because I was just going to ask, how are we going to balance um, all of this? Because if I'm going to speak from a personal point of view, I went to I went into secondary school pretty early. I did not I did not do the primary six that you talk about. I think I went from primary four, and at the age of eight, I was already thrown into secondary school, um, and I went to a federal school at that. Um, so. By 14, I was done with secondary school and I was already looking to go in, into university. So my education was pretty early and i'm sure that's what they're saying here that for exceptional students that you know you're so great with your with your um your studies and all of the subjects that you can that will set you into going into university they would make some provision but how is this going to work how are they going to balance all of this because i'm sure there are so many parents that would say my child is fantastic my child is exceptional i definitely want my child to finish early and there's some you know ambitious parents that would say I want that by the time you're 20, you already have your master's. I know someone who at 19 had a master's already and the person was great and finished from a prestigious university in the UK. So how do we balance all of this, especially when you're dealing with the human elements of parents? And we're still talking about maintaining our educational system in Nigeria. Yeah, as I have already put on record, it's going to be difficult for the government to manage because mm. we live in a very diverse and, uh, you know, complicated, um, you know, society, you know, with a lot of interest that you have to manage as you try to make things work better for society. But maybe government is looking at the possibility that those who consider themselves to be uh, exceptional talents might have to be put in a, in a special system, a special school, a special institution that will really take uh, harness those those the, mm. the, their exceptional abilities uh, give them entrepreneurship skills give them uh, digital skills uh, maybe for a year or two before they are ready to now eventually go to the class mm. where they will go and learn theories and uh, and then work uh, mix those theories with the skills on uh, mm. with respect to digital the digital tools and entrepreneurship to enable them to begin to fly high but that's going to be very problematic for them because it's a, a country that is producing about two million uh, uh secondary school graduates annually is going to be uh, that's a huge number to 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 to, to be able to handle because uh, especially in nigeria where the Igbo has uh, Yoruba minority uh, uh, challenges are there. Mm -hmm. How are you going to uh, mix and match and, and, and determine who qualifies and who does not qualify? Yeah. So government should uh, try and um, you know go for something that they can handle. I, mm -hmm. I think this one is going to be a very difficult one. A smarter thing to do is to let, allow a transition period and mm -hmm. letting parents know now that with effort from, let's say, 2030, Nigeria is no longer going to permit a child uh, starting um, um, university before the age of 18. That would, be, that would make more sense, be easier uh, to manage seamlessly uh, by saying you are going to feature the talented people. How do you know who a talented person is? We don't even have the skills in the system yeah. to be able to uh, do that system, that, do that sifting. So, because I was even going to ask, is that going to be like some form of testing um, that would be done? How can you tell that this person is exceptional? Because, you know, you even see videos on social media of maybe kids in China and they're already doing amazing things. They're so young, but their brains work so well 
and they harness it so well that they do amazing things so and i'm sure there are people in nigeria that, that they're, they're as talented as that because we have huge um huge talents here in nigeria so is there going to be some form of testing and what is the transition period going to be like i know you've already stated that maybe give like five years but are there other things that you think um kids can be doing pending when they now get to the ripe age of going into the university for instance you know tech is the in thing now so is that going to be a time you know by the government maybe even sponsored by the government saying you know what we know you have not reached the, uh, our age limits yet but after testing you we decided that we're going to put you through or no after testing you and you did not fall you did not you know do so great in that we've decided that we're going to put you in a facility where you can learn other things especially with the two basic skills that the minister is talking about that you should have at least with um, um, your educational um, your your educational journey in total well uh, as I have already uh, put on record um, this is going to be difficult for the government to manage <laughs> yes you said the that major, um, the major obstacle we have had to national development and getting a society that is very functional is the fact that most of the time the people who uh, manage our public um, institutions and agencies are people who like to place the cart before the horse really um, how do you how do you how do you implement a policy that has actually not been clearly formulated because mm -hmm. what the minister they are still thinking about what to do and you have now <laughs> seen it so in proper in the societies where people you know do things smoothly uh, you will first have to sit down and think about these two two million children who finish secondary school uh, who will finish secondary school in 2025? Who are saying you are not going to allow them to get into university? How do you, how do you, um, you know, make provisions that will ensure that they don't end up in the hands of, uh, as we say in, in most parts of Africa, the devil, who will use them, you know, as tools to, to, to create problems for society? Now, even when you say you are going to um, try and ensure everybody finishing, you know, junior secondary school will will end up with uh, two major skills, you know, digital skills and entrepreneurship skills. How do they acquire those skills? Who is going to teach them that? We have not trained the trainer. The average Nigerian teacher is not an entrepreneur. He is too afraid to take risks. Those are the people you are going to depend on to train your children to become entrepreneurs. They themselves are not entrepreneurs. I run a platform for teachers, which is the largest in the world. And I know that these teachers are not, most of them, nine out of ten teachers in Nigeria cannot pass for the definition of an entrepreneur because they are vast to risk. They, they always try to avoid risk and, and don't know what it make, means to move towards gain. They have not been trained themselves to know how to balance things, to know how to you know, move into the unknown without, you know, having their fingers burnt. So you haven't trained the teachers on entrepreneurship. You haven't trained the, you haven't trained the teachers on, on uh, giving them uh, 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 digital skills. You haven't provided equipment. The average Nigerian child doesn't, doesn't own a smartphone. Mm. Most of the time, we get deceived by what we see in Lagos, Abuja, and Portacot, and we think that's Nigeria. The average Nigerian child is not, doesn't live in Abuja, doesn't live in Portacot, doesn't live in Lagos. He lives in Yobe. He lives in, in Nasrawa. He lives in uh, in uh, in Oweri. He lives in uh, Akwaibom. He lives in far flung places that most of us haven't heard about before. And the teachers who operate in those kinds of places don't even have access to computer. Those who have managed to acquire smartphones, they have difficulty even having those phones function. They, they can't put credits, internet credits on their phones because they, they can't afford the money. So, who are you going to use to provide these skills that the government is talking about? Are there people you have not, uh, uh, you have not empowered? Teachers who, uh, who are paid 20,000 naira? From, from which money will they be able to operate on the internet? Where the resources you are going to use to give these their children, they are, they are taking care of, you know, digital skills. So, this has not been well chewed, and uh, I, I think that um, it's going to be problematic. So, the smart thing to do is to not be too much in a hurry and um, tell yourself we have got it wrong but that thing we have got wrong is not a problem we can address overnight we have to give ourselves a transition period of five years and start you know promoting the idea that going to school is not just for the purpose of um, passing exams and getting certificate because when the minister is talking about let's wait until we are 18 parents 
you know, uh, misunderstand him, uh, obviously, because they think that, ah, my child finished with five A's, my child mm -hmm. finished with nine A's. The, the whole essence of education is not just for you to go and finish with nine A's. That's just one part of the story. Yeah. About ninety, about seventy percent, about seventy percent of what you go to school to do has little or nothing to do with your certificate. Mm -hmm. It's a place where you go to open your mind. Yeah. It's a place where you go to acquire relational skills. It's a place where you go to, you know, uh, 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 develop your capacity to think in the abstract. Even if you don't come out with certi with certificates, so long as you have developed your capacity through play which we don't permit so much in our country mm. you, you you would have succeeded in in, in in excelling in a place like you know finland children don't even write any exam until they're age 16 and the average person in finland doesn't enter university until he's age 18. in fact by the time you finish high school the, the next port of call is not actually university in a country like, like, like finland which runs the best education system especially at primary and secondary school in, in the world the first place you go to before you start thinking about university is to go to a military military school for training because they want everybody to be fit they want everybody to be ready to mm. defend their country in case of external uh, aggression mm. those are not the kind of things we are, we are thinking about the things people are doing after secondary school are, are the things we, we are doing after university so mm. those are fundamental areas of our national education you know policy and practice that we are not I'm thinking through very well. And we just woke up and we want to make Nigeria become America, become United <laughs> Kingdom overnight. It's not, mm. that is not how the world works. Right. I mean, I, I hear all that you've said, and I think definitely we need some formal, we need some reforms with our educational system. And so I'm going to ask you um, if there were some developments that you would like to see right now, what would those be? Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm endlessly praying you know, for government to recognize that teachers are front and center when it comes to making the education system uh, functional, making mm. the education system deliver on its promise to society. And that anything you want to, you want to implement, uh, you must first start by giving the teachers the opportunity to feel respected to feel acknowledged to feel recognized to feel that the job they are doing is a job that is appreciated by society and is a job that pays well that that can that can put food on the table yeah and that and that it is also a job you have prepared them for the average nigerian teacher has not been prepared for the job he's doing in the classroom he has not been properly trained really so train the teachers first and make teaching a very attractive profession make mm. pay teachers well respect them stop parents from coming to schools to harass them you know and then uh, uh, let, let's see more, let's see teachers win uh, national merit award let's see them become uh, you know uh, 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 those kinds of uh, uh, titles you give to people you give national merit award mm -hmm. uh, M -M 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 this and the uh, national this and that let, let teachers win those awards celebrate them at a global at the international stage mm. so that the best brands can come into the teaching profession and help you to implement the things you want to implement and anytime you think about changing anything in the system don't just wake up as a government or just those talk with your directors as a minister and then the following day you make an announcement consult stakeholders talk to parents talk to um you know uh, school leaders school owners now that we have the private school system playing a critical role which they, they, they are looking like they are indispensable in the current you know education system we are running which which is very unfortunate for all because they're educating the citizenry you know it should be a, a government's responsibility because right. education is a social good once you get mm -hmm. it right with education all other you know departments of our national life will get fixed but the people running the public space in nigeria don't seem to have understood this and they keep you know chasing the things that um, you know are not the first things that, that anybody should chase and mm -hmm. ignoring the things that they should be worried about at, at the moment so let's get a good education policy yeah. uh, a good education philosophy and then enunciate policies that will support the actualization of what that policy um you know is 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 is, is targeting at and we start right. we start running all right yeah from what i you know what i got from this consult i i think it's important that they consult um stakeholders you're talking to the teachers you're talking to the leaders you're talking to the parents because if we're saying that we want a better educational system we're a makeup of people and you definitely want to consult all of those people before you make certain policies that would work for the people we're hoping that our educational system will be better and we're churning out quality citizens it's not even just about 
going to school, cramming what you've learned and putting it down on paper, but your brains are, are sharpened, your minds are open, they're sharpened, and you're just better for it. So hopefully, our educational system would be better. Thank you so much, Dr. Peter, for coming. It's always a pleasure having you on our program. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day. You too, sir. All right, so we're speaking with Dr. Peter Ogudoro. He's an education researcher, and we've just been talking about our varsity in Nigeria and the age limit according to the minister. But this is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with me. My name is Rume Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day. Good morning. <music>